I grew up in a wild Italian-Irish family. Is that for the Italian or the Irish? <laughs> so my grandmother was youngest of 17. 16 of them died of cancer, including my grandmother. So at the ripe old age of 67, my mother passed away at 49 from colon cancer. So my mother passed away, sadly, and um, six months later, I was diagnosed with um, late-stage leukemia. And I remember thinking I was living in a bad lifetime movie. Like, are you, like seriously? Like, really? So um, I didn't want to lose my hair. You know, my hair was down to my waist. And my mother lost her hair three times. And I thought, I don't want to lose my hair. And they couldn't guarantee they could cure me. They said, in fact, we can only extend your life. You're pretty far advanced. And I said, well, then why would I do this? Why would I spend my last six months sick? And they said, well, you don't have any options here. And I said, well, yeah, I do. I'm going to move back to Italy die in a garret painting, like Camille. And they said, yeah, you can't do that. You're going to the hospital right now. And I said, well, no, I'm not. 26 years old. You can't make me do things. I got to think about this. So I left. So I was about to leave for Europe. And a friend of mine who was trying to date me said, you have to meet this guy. He eats this weird food, and he says it cures cancer. And I'm thinking, great. That's great. So he introduced me to, I don't know where he is right now, Robert, my husband. So clearly it worked out. Um, anyway, he introduced me to Robert, who passionately told me that if I changed my food and my blood pH, I could cure cancer. And I thought, well, if this is so great, why isn't everybody doing this? I was 204 pounds when I started eating this way, and in three months had lost almost 100 pounds. But mostly I was starving, because I didn't like the food, and I didn't want any junk, so I just didn't eat. <laughs> so it's one way to do it. 14 months, my technician Janine came out, took blood, came out again, came out again, came out again. And finally I said, we're either feeding every vampire in Philly or there's a problem. She says, the doctor needs to see you, there's a problem. And they said, well, we can't find any leukemic cells in your blood and we can't explain that. And I said, well, you should be happier. Come on, man, I have leukemia. And they said, no, that's impossible. You, you have to have leukemia. And I said, well, I know I have to but I clearly don't. So they said, well, it's possible that we didn't diagnose you accurately. I said, okay, so let me get this straight. For the last 14 months, you've taken my blood every month and you made the same mistake every time? That would make you morons. <laughs> so that was 29 years ago, actually, that I was declared cancer-free and have stayed there ever since because all I did was change my food. When I was a kid, and we had a stomach ache. My grandmother boiled a fennel bulb. And we drank this fennel tea, and your stomach ache went away. If we had a toothache, she did something with garlic, made a poultice on your tooth, and you went to the dentist. And by the time you got there, some of the stuff had drawn out. Like, they knew. They were completely connected to food. And they knew it had an energy. They knew it had a purpose. They knew you didn't just eat to eat. We lost that in one generation, in my mother's generation of marketers telling us that women didn't have a moral imperative to cook for their families anymore. Ever since ancient Rome, we've extended our life every generation. This is the first generation that will begin to reverse that trend. Now, it can change like that. It can change if every mother in this room says, I'm not buying any junk. We think we have no power. We think we can't change it. And the truth is, you hold all the power.